Okay, I've got to be honest. I didn't absolutely love Super Mario Odyssey. Boom. <laughs> 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 all right, everyone, just just just, just get a bit of tense in here. Just uh, bring it down a couple of notches. All right, I just want to say my stuff, and then then I'll get out of here. All right. All right, boys, start her up. Start the video. Let's get the show on the road. Mario Odyssey is a great game. I do like it. It was fun. Just, uh, I have a few issues. But first off, I want to say that controlling Mario has never been more precise and amazing as this. Yes, it's the same basic movement from Mario 64, but with some added additions. And if you ever forget the controls, they have dedicated an entire screen of how to control Mario. Which is neat, I guess. It's definitely better than a whole separate DVD included with the game Super Mario Galaxy 2. Did anyone even watch this thing? I think I turned it on once just to see what it was, and I realised I didn't need to watch it in order to understand how to play the game. But I've been playing these games for most of my life, so like a lot of people, controlling Mario is just muscle memory now. I don't really know if new players find Mario difficult to manoeuvre. I would have to think not. It was pretty easy for me when I was younger. Well, I mean, I've seen how these games journals handle platformers. <laughs> Oh my god, dude, read, oh my god. Okay, so in this game, you can throw your hat and possess an enemy, which is cool, but this is actually a replacement for power-ups in the game. What? A new Mario title with no new power-ups? I understand they did this as a new experience, and it worked great, but I mean, you're really not going to give us any new flowers? New caps? I mean, not even so much as a fire flower? I don't really know why they didn't include both possessing enemies and power-ups. Maybe it would have been a bit too overpowered? But it would have been awesome to possess a dinosaur and collect the fire flower, start breathing on Goombas everywhere, like Charizard? I guess that's sort of villainous though. Would have made a cool boss fight against Bowser, two fire-breathing dinosaurs. Oh, that would have been sick. I haven't played this game in over a year, and just now I'm trying to recall any of the level names. I remember the desert level, I remember the food level, and the beach level, the ice level. Can you see what I'm saying? If someone asked me to name a level in Mario 64, I'd be like, Womp's Fortress, Mabon Battlefield, Hazy Maze Cave, Lethal Lava Land. Mario Odyssey's levels just aren't memorable for me. I can even recall Super Mario Galaxy levels. By the way, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are the best 3D Mario games, hands down. Good Egg, Loop De Loop, Bubble Breeze, Freeze Flame, Toy Time, each distinct and memorable. All right, now let's kick back over to Mario Odyssey and take a look at their names. Wooded Kingdom, Sand Kingdom, Cloud Kingdom, Lost Kingdom, Metro Kingdom, it's all just kingdoms. What happened here? What happened to the awesome names of the levels, dude? I'm not a massive completionist or anything, but when it comes to most 3D Mario games, I try to give it a fair shot. I've completed Mario 64, 64 DS, Galaxy 1 and 2. The thing is, is that these games have about 120 to 240 stars, depending on which game. In Mario Odyssey, there's well over 800 moons. My first thought into my head was, oh no, this is going to be really tedious, isn't it? It's going to be like Donkey Kong 64. Which thankfully I don't think it is, but I'm not going to lie and say that this didn't hurt the experience for me. Since sometimes you can just find them lying all over the place. The world's a chock full of these Kirby buggers. The fact is, in previous Mario titles, getting a star was really rewarding. You did it buddy, you beat the challenge, you collected enough purple coins on this 8-bit version of Luigi in a lot of period of time. Good job, gold star for you. Literally. Some of the stars in the Galaxy games are challenging, but not impossible, but definitely tough for a tiny 10 year old me, who lacked the skill to acquire some resulting in... What? But what I'm trying to say is that getting a star in a Mario game felt good. You know, getting a moon of me feels just like I'm checking it off a list. So completionist wise, I don't think I'm going to try to continue to get all the moons in Mario Odyssey. It's just not fun. Which pains me to say because 100%ing Mario games is one of my favourite things to do. But I just can't do it. I love the Switch. Breath of the Wild was amazing, as everyone knows. But I had a Wii U to play that. I bought the Switch just for Mario Odyssey. And it sucks that it wasn't the experience I was hoping it to be. Maybe Odyssey 2, or whatever the next Mario title is, will be a better game. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on the game that I needed to get off my chest. Thank you for listening. If you want more content like this, subscribe to my very own channel. Also, check out some of my friends videos also on the Relog channel. We work really hard to try and produce the content we want to make, and I appreciate you clicking on the link. Thanks for watching.